um, and we were able to do it in faith. Um, and I will tell you that it took, it, it took a lot for us to be able to do that. And so uh, I want to acknowledge everyone, all of the volunteers. Let's give all the volunteers a hand clap for what they did yesterday. They did a marvelous, marvelous job yesterday. Um, but the job of, the, the job of every, every organization has a CFO. Every organization has a CFO. And the CFO of every organization has a, a, a tireless job at times because the CFO is actually responsible for ensuring that that company or that organization has finances available when they need to be made available. And so um, we do want to honor our CFO this morning, tell our CFO thank you so much for what she does in ensuring that we have uh, what we need. And that at a moment's notice, you know, we don't, you know, we don't lack, we don't lack anything in here, right? So we, you know, we good to go, you know. So matter of fact, you know, y'all drive some really nice cars. I see brand new Camaros out in the parking lot. I see Cadillacs. I see Mercedes. <laughs> and the brother is driving a hoopty. Amen. But I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine with my hoopty with my May Pops on there. May Pops. They may pop any moment. You know what I mean? So. They may pop any moment. Listen, let's, uh, let's, uh, how many of y'all were excited yesterday by, by Flex? <laughs> Flex. Flex showed up yesterday. Come on, oh, Flex is in the house today. Where's he at? <laughs> My man, Flex. <laughs> What's up, Flex? <laughs> Listen, Flex put it down yesterday. I'm so excited yesterday. Flex is out of new. Flex got moved too. Check him out. Look. So listen, I'm so excited yesterday. Uh, man, Flex showed up. All the kids were excited. So Flex, the Fearless Flocks, is our new addition to our children's church team. Not only you know, just our children's church, but to our church in general. Uh, and I'm so I'm I'm so excited. I didn't know Flex had moves like that yesterday. He was getting it, man. I was like, man, yeah, there we go. Go ahead, Flex. Go ahead. <laughs> Amen. So listen, we are so excited about Flex, man. Uh, he just yesterday showed up. He had police. He had police escort when he showed up yesterday. Kids was all over Flex. Flex was Flex was bumping it. He was good, you know. So we gonna have to we gonna make so we gonna get Flex some security. We gotta get him security. And we got to get him a car. We got to get you your own car, Flex. We'll get you your own car. And so, yeah, so listen, uh, be excited about him. Um, we're gonna, Flex is going to be here at least once a month helping out with the kids' church. But not only that, but he's going to be coming doing some sermon illustrations for us. We are so, so excited about Flex. So come on, y'all. Get Flex our Fearless Fox. New addition to the church. Give him a hand. Amen. Amen. It's a marvelous thing. We love, we love Flex, man. Flex is amazing. Hey, listen, let's go into the Bible really, really quick uh, this morning, and let's finish up our topic. Uh, we're going to be talking this morning about cooperating with God. We got a few scriptures that we have to move through expeditiously, uh, so we will move through them. I will not elaborate them on as much time as I took last week. Uh, some do bear elaboration, but some do not. I'll move through those. Some I will just kind of give you an inspirational quote, something to encourage you and to strengthen you and to build you up. Um, how many of you are excited about what God is doing in your life right now? Amen. Amen. And, and, so, and so I am, too. You know, we were praying this morning. I will tell you that the greatest part of my Sunday, anyway, is being here at 9 o'clock when we come in to pray. It's just something about this atmosphere that's set at 9 uh, with the prophets and evangelists and everyone here as we're all praying and just seeking God face. And this morning we were just kind of in a moment of stillness um, to where we just were just kind of listening to what God had to say for us. And that was just a marvelous thing. Um, so, you know, so 9 a.m. in the morning, if you're not doing anything, please come on by um, and just kind of just bring your Bible, bring your notepad and just kind of sit still and just uh, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Uh, that's what prayer is really all about, right? Prayer is really not spending time with yourself. It's not spending time with yourself, listening to yourself talk. But prayer is spending time with God and listening to God talk. And this is what we do. Now, we do pray and we talk to God and, you know, we ask, you know, we submit our requests according to the Bible. But in any relationship, my wife and I, you know, my wife has been on me, you know, she has been sharing this with me. So in any relationship, there has to be good communication. Right. There has to be there's the, the, the two factors anyway. And, and communication is sender and receiver. 
And so, um, so God sends and we, re- and we receive. Or you know, sometimes we send and God receives. So either way, uh, we have to be um, in our communication. Sometimes after we finish talking, you have to stop and listen. Oftentimes we're praying and then we get up off our knees and God said, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to give you the answer, but then you walk away. And you miss the answer. God said, I'm getting ready to tell you what to do, but then you get finished, you just boom, hurry up, and then we walk off. Sometimes it's an opportunity for us to just get still before God and just be quiet and allow God to speak to you and just tell you, here is what I want you to do. That's where it comes from, okay? And that's where it comes from. Um, Listen, if you have your offering in your hand, let's lift up our offering this morning. We are going to lift up our offering this morning. Remember, um, you know, uh, you can give either online. Um, You can go to www.worshipcenter.org, and there is a link there that says online giving, or you can download the app for Giblify, um, and you can give there. You can go PayPal if you have PayPal, Worship Center, and then you can give there. Or if not, you can also write a check, and you can mail it in. You can do snail mail, snail mail. You can mail the check to P.O. Box 969, New Baltimore, Michigan, um, 148047, uh, right? 48047. Amen. You can do it that way. Or if, if not, you can call me and I will meet you at Kroger. <laughs> if you just feel you need to put your offering in somebody's hand, just call me. I'll meet you. I'll meet you at the Kroger. I'll meet you at the Walmart. Glory to God. It don't matter. And if you lay down in your bed at night and at 1 o'clock in the morning, the Lord wake you up and say, I need you to submit an offering. Call me. I'll come and meet you. I'll come pick it up from your house if that's the case. Call me. Call me. If you need someone to talk to, amen, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Like Jackson 5 say, call me. I'll be there. I'll be there. Amen. Yeah, so, you know, listen. Uh, how many of y'all know laughter does the heart good like a medicine? I, I, listen, look, when God wakes me up in the morning, I'm so glad just for the spirit to be able to laugh sometimes. You hear what I'm telling you? Because if I couldn't laugh, I would allow the trials and tribulations of the day to consume me. And sometimes when I look at the things that people do and the things that people say, I, sometimes I, you just got to laugh. You, you do. You just have to laugh sometimes. You, you really do. You just have to laugh. So come on, get your offering in your hand. Come on, get your offering in your hand. Uh, Ray, amen. You got your offering in your hand. Good, 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 good. Get your offering. And let's, 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 let's make our confession of faith. Glory to God. You ready? And say, this is not a debt that I owe, but it's a seed that I sow. I sow it in faith, expecting a harvest. Harvest. Come when? In Jesus' name. Amen. There's a bucket to right here. There's, there's offering baskets to your left and right. You can begin to make your way there. Uh, do it in your own style and in your own manner. Uh, and, I'm, and, and I'm okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, listen, a couple of quick notes for you. Again, like I said, I am so excited. Let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, let's get into uh, this word of God this morning. Um, listen, I want to do something a little different this morning. Um, Carrie, can you tune me up an additional microphone, please? Hello. Carrie, is Carrie, did anybody see Carrie today? Has anybody seen? Oh, there he is. All right. I wanted to make sure my audio video man is in the building. Somebody give him a hand. Give him the audio video man a hand. And now tell him, hurry up. Say, Pastor needs something. Hurry up. Amen. 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 Carrie, Carrie. Carrie, uh, amen. Like, you know, like Judas, like, uh, you know, Jesus told Judas, that what you do, do quickly. He, t- he didn't tell Judas to take his time. He told Judas, do it quickly. Amen. So that which that what I asked you to do, do quickly. Amen. Amen. So uh, you know, uh, listen. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, but I'm going to pass this microphone around, and I'm going to have a couple of y'all read some scriptures for me too this morning. Uh, I want to start. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, can I start with you, Teresa, this morning? Just reading a scripture. Amen. I can. I, absolutely. So let me hand this to you. Uh, there you go. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have my wife read a couple of scriptures this morning. I'm going to get everybody involved. Everybody involved, all right? Everybody. So get, light up a couple of mics back there, um, guys, and this, we're going to pass them around. So I want everybody to read a couple of scriptures this morning. A little, little, little Sunday morning family conversation, right? Let's walk through the park and let's have some, uh, have some good time. All right, but before we do it, let's take up another offering. I'm, I feel like taking up another offering. <laughs> Amen. And a matter of fact, I'm going to lock the door. Ain't nobody leaving this time. Are y'all ready? Amen. Laughter does the heart good like a medicine. Now, now listen to what I'm getting ready to share with you. You got to write this down. And it, I'm, 
Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, Teresa. Uh, Teresa, no, no, no. You good, man. You good. You good. You the CFO. Say what you want to say up in here. Amen. So, Teresa, can, I need you to grab uh, Genesis 1, 1 to 3. That's where I want you to start. And you grab that one. And then I want to share this with you before we get started. Let's pray first, though. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, first of all, I thank you this morning, God, for this great, great congregation, this great, great members and these partners. God, I thank you for their faithful giving. I thank you, God, for their love. But God, more important, God, I thank you for their humor. I thank you, God, for their ability to laugh. I thank you, God, for their ability to love. And I thank you, God, for their ability to share. Father, I thank you, God, they don't wear their emotions on their sleeves. And God, I pray this morning for them, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would bless them and things that money cannot buy. I pray, God, that there be open windows, open doors, open garageways, open exits, whatever that they are in need of this morning. God, let them find it in you. And Father, I thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Listen, so let's go there. We're at Genesis 1, 1 to 3, and let's begin to look at the person next to you. Just wave your hand and say, good morning, neighbors. Good to see you. Good to see you. Tell them, say, you just came in a little late after offering, but we can do it again if you like. No, don't say that. Don't say that. I might get mad at you. Listen, listen to this. Write this down. I need you to write this down. Write this down. My brother is back from, from, uh, from out west. We're glad to see you. Thank you for returning. Glory to God. We appreciate you. I was out west. Was it good? Amen. Glad to see you back. Amen. 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 He said he loved to come here. He said, because the pastor is fiery over there. I said, amen. I said, he is? All right. Amen. All right, listen. All right, so listen to this. There are laws that cover just about everything that we do in life. There are laws that we cover, that, 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 that cover just about everything that we do in life. There are laws. In other words, laws, principles, that just about everything that we do in life. And these laws are designed to ensure things are working effectively and efficiently in your life. Okay. They're working effectively and efficiently in your life. How many of you, when your mother, when you were growing up and your mother told you, uh, J.D.'s mom is not here so I can pick on him this morning. Uh, how many of you, when you were growing up, your mother told you, do not cross that street if the light is red? Do you know why? Does anybody know why? Okay, some of y'all looking at me like, no, y'all don't know why. Okay, the reason why is because if you cross the street while the light is red, it's a potential for you to become a hood ornament on somebody else's car, right? You might get hit, okay? So there's the law, right? Don't go across the street when the light is red, right? And what's the other law? Look both ways when you're crossing the street. Don't cross the street when the, law is, when the light is yellow. Why? Because someone is going to run the yellow light, and they could hit you. And do you know the, the, the percentage in Michigan of cars that run the yellow light they are typically at least three lengths away from the light. And they're still running. How do, how do we know that? I'm in that statistic. I'm typically 500 yards away from the light, and it goes yellow, and I step it on, boom, and it's whoo, and that, and that Jeep Cherokee will take off, man. I'll put it in sport mode then, and it's just, bam, it's going, you know? Everybody say, you got to stop running lights. I'm going to stop running lights. Amen. But listen, so let's go to Genesis. Teresa, can you read that for me, please, really quick? One, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yep. And the earth was without form. Yep. And void and dark, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Yep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now watch this. Listen closely. Write this down. Shout about it. Do whatever you got to do. You can text this. You can tweet this. Whatever the case may be. The word of God, when used properly, will turn disorder and chaos in your life to order. Y'all missed that one. The word of God, when used properly, when, when used properly, will take all the disorder in your life and bring it to order. Are you following me? So what are you waiting for right now in your life? The disorder and the chaos in your life, the ability is in your mouth right now. All you have to do is speak the word and bring that chaos and disorder to, dis to order in your life. Did you know that? 
When God spoke, he turned, he took the darkness, he took all that chaos and disorder, and he said, let there be light. And watch this. There has been light since that moment in time. So what is out of order in your life is the question I asked you this morning. What is there that's not right in your life, that's out of order, that you want to be made right, that you want to bring in line with God's word? What is that thing? We all have something. It may not be, yours may not be as, uh, as bad as mine, or it may not be as significant as mine, but we all have something. There is, we all have something in our life that we are not happy with that's out of order that we seem to be either holding on to or we seem to be slowing us down from doing the thing that we need to do. And what I'm telling you today is it's time for you today to take that thing and bring it in order and watch the manifestation of the blessings of God accelerate in your life. And the reason why I say they're going to accelerate because we spend so much time, watch this, we spend so much time dealing with the confusion and the chaos. We spend so much time fighting, we spend so much time fussing, we spend so much time being angry, we spend so much time doing all those things. Watch this, I got my hand up. We spend so much time doing those things, watch, that we don't even have the energy sometimes to deal with the order and get those things in, uh, uh, correct in our lives. But what I'm telling you here today is take the word of God, use it, work with God, use it properly and take the things that are in disorder and array and chaos Speak the word over them and watch God bring order in your life. And I guarantee you that area in your life will begin to produce a harvest. If a farmer went out to his field, watch this, watch this. I'm bringing to a good illustration for you. If a farmer went out to his field, and he saw an er I'm going to use my wife for an example. My wife has a garden in, in our home. Beautiful garden. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm so amazed because when people come by our house, now they stop and they take pictures. Now I'm not, now I'm, now I'm trying to figure out, now here's what I'm trying to figure out. Now watch. I'm trying to figure out whether they take a picture of the garden or they the CIA. I don't know, they might be the feds watching me or something, you know what I mean? So I don't know anymore. See, when they coming by, I don't know what they doing. So now they out there taking pictures. They take pictures of the garden, they out there posing and all in my garden and stuff like that. And I'm kind of like, is that, what's going on? Is something really going on here? But my wife tends to this garden. It is the most beautiful thing that you ever want to see. I mean, it's immaculate. There's not a, it's not a hair out of place. I mean, there's not a hair out of place. But watch, but when there is a weed that comes up, she tends to the weed. And the reason why she tends to the weed is because the weed brings, can produce other weeds. Y'all not listening to me. Y'all just, just, just nodding your heads this morning. The weed can produce other weeds. So if she doesn't tend to that weed, that weed has the potential to continue to produce other weeds and produce chaos in the garden. Are you following me? So what she does is she clips the weed, pulls it at its root, gets rid of the weed, so that way the weed can no longer produce, everybody say, it can't produce chaos. And this is what I'm trying to share with you this morning, that when you use the word of God effectively and use it according to what God has told you, it will take the chaos in your life and the disorder in your life and bring proper order to where you will begin to, a lot of us, listen, listen, Everybody stretch your hand towards me and say, Pastor, you need to calm down. You're angry. <laughs> so you just flat out angry. That's all. You just angry. You just flat out angry with people. So calm yourself down. Pump your brakes. Now watch this. Listen closely to me. A lot of times we're not seeing the manifestation of the presence of God or the manifestations of God's blessings in our lives is because we're not operating where God has called us to operate. You follow me? And so, for instance, I could call my son and ask my son. I said, my son, I said, hey, listen, I need you to meet me at such and such a place. And here's the route that I want you to take. 
I want you to go down 94, take grass, go that way and go this way. I'll meet you there at 9 o'clock. Where are you at? I'm on my way. Well, where, where are you? We're supposed to meet at 9 o'clock. Well, I decided to go a different way, and now I'm stuck in traffic. Why didn't... Why... Did... <laughs> I'm going to get a benediction in a minute. Listen. Why didn't you go the way I told you to go? Had you went the way I told you to go, you would have arrived on time. This is what I'm trying to share with you this morning. Watch this. If we are doing the things the way God tells us to do them, we can begin to shorten some of these long seasons in our lives and begin to see the harvest being produced in a time that they need to be produced. All right, turn with me real quick to Luke chapter 10 and verse number 19. Come on, guys, let's go. Y'all holding me up. Uh, Teresa, I need you to go one more. Can you go one more for me then? I'm sorry, I didn't, mean to, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to throw that on you. Yeah, Luke chapter 10 and 19, and then, uh, then pass it to Shirley. And then let's go, to, let's, let's go to Shirley. And let's see, Luke chapter 10, Teresa and 19. Take your time. So listen closely. Um, okay, are you there? Okay, go ahead. Read the first verse again. Go back again. Read it one more time. But put some e emphasis on some emboliance. Stop. Watch this. Listen. Here's what he said. He said, behold, I give unto you. Everybody put your hand up. Go like this. Say, he's giving me power. He's giving me power. Say, I have it. I have it. Now watch this. Now keep right. your hand there. I'm going to hurt your feelings, but you'll be okay. I'm just going to, I'll rub you back the wrong way. Watch this. The only reason, say it to yourself. The only reason. The only reason. Why I don't have what I need to have. Why I don't have what I need to have. Because I have not used my power right. Because I haven't used my power right. Yeah. Amen. The only reason, watch this, listen closely. The only reason, why, no, I could say that, my wife, my wife never fit up. <laughs> listen, the only reason sometimes why we, got, why we got these demons walking around in our houses and why we got these demons harassing us on our jobs and all kind of stuff is because you have been given the power and you haven't used the power to cancel the assignment for that demon. That's it. Don't wait, you, you waiting for God to do something? He's giving you delegated authority to do according to his word. He's already given you delegated authority right here. He said, behold, I, God, I, God, have given you power. So therefore, the situation that you're facing, God said, I have already delegated and given you the power to stop whatever it is that is hindering you and coming against you. God has already given you the power, watch this, to bring your life to a sense of normalcy. Are, are y'all following me? You have the power. Speak the word for that situation and allow the word of God to go do what it's going to do. Do you remember what Jesus said to the centurion, to the, to the, to the lady, to the centurion? The centurion said, Lord, you know, come by my house. And Jesus said, I don't, he told Jesus, he asked Jesus about coming to his house, but he said, Lord Jesus, you don't need to come. Watch this. He said, just send your word. Send your word and your word will do what you can do without you even coming there. How many of y'all are going to start sending out the word? Amen. He said, faith, watch this. He said, if you have the faith as the mustard seed, watch this. You can speak to this mountain and tell it removed. Yeah. Right? In other words, you can speak to this chaos. You can speak to this tribulation. You can speak to this turmoil. You can speak to this financial problem. You can speak to this sickness. You can speak to this. You can speak to these things and bring them in line with the word of God because you have been invested 
with power and authority from on high. You are God's designated representative here on earth. So whatever God has told you to do and whatever you, you begin to speak on this earth, it still has to obey what you're saying, because what you're saying is coming directly from the heart of God. Did y'all did y'all know that? Touch somebody and tell them, say, I got power. Now watch this. So we have to learn to cooperate with God. We've been talking about cooperating with God. So what does cooperating with God look like? Here's what it looks like. Cooperating with God is simply this. Um, me and God working together. For me to get to my destiny. For me to fulfill my purpose. Now, now some of y'all are looking at me real angry and y'all got that y'all got that, that that Baptist look on y'all face that y'all that y'all angry with me. But let me explain something to you about cooperating with God. Watch this. God's not an enabler. If you think without a shadow of a doubt that he's going to do everything for you, he will then become an enabler. Hello? But he's not going to enable you. Why? He wants to empower you to do some things for yourself. Now, yes, I do agree. There are times when you are going to come up against things. Listen, let me share something with y'all, and please don't get angry with me, but understand what I'm saying. Listen, I know everybody in this room at times have problems. We, we all got problems. I got problems. If you don't think of I, I got problems, too. We all have them. It's, it, they're they're, they're, they're going to come up. Right. But listen closely to what I'm getting ready to share with you. Sometimes watch this. Sometimes God will allow you to experience problems that your pastor can't solve. I'm not I am nobody's superhero. You hear me? But he did. But the reason why he does that, watch this, listen closely. The reason why he does that is because oftentimes we're running to people to have people solve our problems. When God is saying you need to come running to me because I'm the problem solver. Can you take my car and park it around the back? Listen, so there are some benefits for cooperating with God. Everybody say there's benefits cooperating with God. So there's benefits for cooperating with God. It's just like there's benefits in any relationship. It's like the, it's the benefits, there's benefits in a marriage relationship where the husband and wife work together. There's benefits for that, right? There's benefits. There's benefits when you try to work with your coworkers. And sometimes they ain't the most pleasant people. And sometimes we ain't. But there's benefits. <laughs> there's benefits if you got a job and you get up and go to work in the morning. There's benefits on Friday. If you don't, there ain't no benefits on Friday. You follow me? So don't call me. And say to me, Pastor, I need a loan. I didn't go to, I didn't go to work this week. I'm be like, hey. Sound like a personal problem to me. And if you want my money, you're going to have to go through the, to the, through the pastoral financial counsel. I'm going to look at everything. I'm looking at all your records. I'm worse than the, I'm worse than the IRS. Listen. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I am scared the people off now. Listen closely. Listen. There's benefits to it. Right. So there's benefits to cooperating with God. And I want us to change our perception to see that there are benefits. Not only are there, but the benefits, there are benefits for, for us to make us better. And that's what this whole thing is about. It's about making us better. So let me share with you one of the, one of the benefits for cooperating with God or working with God, the law of what I call the law of cooperation. And, and for some of y'all coming in on telling the sermon, we, we, we've been talking about this law of cooperating, right, of cooperating with God and how that's a spiritual principle that when we cooperate with God and we act in obedience with God, we can expect 
that there's going to be uh, the principle from that to, to work in our lives, okay? So turn with me really quick to, 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 to Luke chapter 8 and verse number 15. I want you to go there. Uh, who's getting that? Somebody's got that? Luke 8 and 15. Uh, somebody get that one. And so listen closely as you're, as, as, as you're going there. So the, one of the benefits of cooperating with God is patience. Oh, Lord Jesus. Everybody say it's patience. Now, patience is something that we all don't want. Because we have become a microwave society. I got to have it right now. I need it right now. That's what your flesh is telling you. Everybody said, I got to quiet my flesh. My flesh tells me I need it now. But my spirit is connected to God who knows when I need it. And who will deliver it right on time? How many times have we made the mistake of purchasing something or buying something? Uh, uh, Listen closely. We've made some of the worst relationship decisions. You hear me? I was patient. Uh, let us all stand. Uh, <laughs> time for the benediction. Bring out the communion. <laughs> I was patient. I was like a, I was like a lion pride. I stalked my prey. I lay low in the weeds and the bushes. Waiting, targeting, through slow, through snow, through sleet, through rain. I just waited and waited until my prey came through and I pounced on it. Ah! But most of us, some of us, listen closely, uh, some of us have uh, gotten ourselves into some bad relationships. You follow me? Because we weren't patient. And what we allowed was we allowed either the woman or the man who presented themselves to us who looked good in the suit. The suit looked good. The shoes were good. The pockets, nah. The credit, sir. And then when they open their mouth, uh, they sound like Luther Vandross. And all of a sudden, you just was like, oh. And that wasn't the person, though. And because had you waited, you could have found out some other things that God wanted you to see. But your flesh made a decision for you that your spirit was telling you to not do. And because you wanted to satisfy your flesh, you jumped full in. And immediately after your flesh was satisfied, you said, oh, my God, what did I get myself into now? That's how it happens. You see, but the thing that you have to understand is, watch this. God don't operate on your timetable. Sometimes God does things suddenly. Sometimes God does things moderately. Sometimes God does things slowly. But the reality is all the time God does things and he always does them the right way. But if you allow them to do them in his timing, you will get what he has promised and not what you want. And so we have to learn to be patient. Read that scripture, Shirley. But that on the good ground are they. Yep. Which in an honest and good heart, having heart, 
heard the word and keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So, so now you see there's three, there's four people. There's, a, there's the stony ground, there's the thorny ground, there's other ground, but then there is the good ground. Everybody say, I'm the good, I'm the good ground. Now watch this. The good ground, watch this, you have been given patience. You have it. You have it. I can remember one time my wife and I, my wife and I was in a church one time, and my wife and my wife picked this up. She picks stuff up faster sometimes than I do. Sometimes she picks stuff up, and I'd be like, huh, what the heck? I, I, didn't, I didn't get that. It'd take me a while sometimes to get it. I'm a little slower. I admit. Openly on TV. In public. Don't judge me though. But there was a guy, and he was this guy was talking about this preacher about praying for patience. My wife's like, I ain't the guy was like, don't pray for patience. And I'm kind of like, that seems to be contradictory to scripture to me because the Bible says to be anxious for nothing but in all things through prayer and supplication. So at some point, then it also seems to be that to not pray for it would be contradictory because Galatians, one of the fruits of the spirit is long suffering and patience. Be like him. Because the Bible says that he is what? Long suffering. He's long suffering. So in other words, when we're not patient with people, we're not exercising a godly quality because the reality is, listen closely to what I'm getting ready to share with you. The reality is, listen closely, holy people. The reality is, watch this. God is patient with you because you ain't always the best to deal with. Sometimes we can be mean and nasty, cutting people off in the road and in the name of Jesus because I'm in a hurry. <laughs> throwing up certain fingers, I don't know which ones y'all throwing up, and then saying I accidentally used the one in the middle by mistake. In Jesus' name. We just, listen. We do everything in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Even when it's wrong, we say, I'm just in Jesus' name. <laughs> and we got to stop that. Laughter does the heart good like a medicine. Sometimes, listen closely, sometimes God's not going to change the situation. But watch this. But he will change you through the situation. So when we're in a situation and we're saying, God, get me out, get me out, get me out. God is saying, no, I'm not going to take you out yet because I can't see my glory yet in you. I have to allow you to stay in this situation until I can see the glory of God and then I'll bring you out. The situation God already has total authority over. He's not worried about the situation. He's worried about getting fruit out of your life. Right. The silver maker, when he throws the silver in, he takes all the silver and as once it gets hot, all the dross or whatever it is, it comes to the top. And then what he does is he takes a filter and he pulls all of that stuff out. The reason why he knows the silver is ready when he can look into the pot and see his reflection. But the only way the silver melts and reproduces his reflection is because the heat has to be turned up. Are you following me? And so watch. So, 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 so just be patient. Be patient. Throw your hand up and say, God knows exactly where I am. And he watched this. Listen closely. Watch this. He will not allow your enemies to triumph over you when you are not doing well. Deuteronomy 32 and uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 20, 35. I'm going to read this one, but pass that mic to somebody. We got another scripture coming up here uh, in Isaiah 55 and 9. Deuteronomy 32 and Deuteronomy 32 and 35. Are y'all ready? Listen closely. Deuteronomy 32 and 35. And here's what it says. It says, uh, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, 
for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste. So listen, let me share something with you. Don't you you don't have to worry about when you're waiting patiently that your enemies are getting an edge on you. They're not because God said this vengeance is mine. Thus saith the Lord, I will repay. So don't focus on what, what, what your enemies are saying. You be patient and wait like a tiger, like a lion until your prey comes and then pounce on it. But you just have to wait because what God is wanting to do in the situation is he wants to do something to you and through you. The situation means nothing. It's all about what he wants to do with you. The other thing, listen to this, the other benefit of cooperating with God is this. Listen closely to this. Another benefit of cooperating with God is this. It's increased learning. Increased learning. Say it again. Increased learning. Now watch this. Pastor, what are you telling me? Here's what I'm telling you. Listen closely to what I'm going to tell you. God is the ultimate teacher. So who are you? If he's the ultimate teacher, then who are you? Who said that? You are the ultimate student or you are the student. Right? So now let's talk about the correlation between the student and the teacher. Does the student tell the teacher what to do? So how does that relationship work? The teacher does what? Teach. And what does the student do? The student takes the information that the, stu the teacher has given him and the student applies it to his life. So that way the student grows what? Intellectually and physically from learning from what the teacher has taught them. Are you following me? So God is the teacher. You are the student. And scripture clearly lays out the teacher student relationship. Look at Isaiah 55 and 9. Who's there? Who got it? Did we get the mic to somebody? Okay, go ahead. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, yep. so are my ways higher than your ways, yep. and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, so he is the teacher. He, listen closely. Listen. Listen closely. He knows more than you. Hello? Am I right? Oh, and guess what else? By the way, he has more than you. Hello? Oh, and by the way, he has more experience than you. Hello? Okay. He's done some things that you were not able to do. Hello? He's been some places that you were not able to go. Hello? So therefore, why would you not listen to this teacher? He is the best at what he does. He is the ultimate teacher. Turn to Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 4. Let's go there real quick. Pass the mic to somebody before they can get the next scripture. I'll read this one. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 4. Here's what, he, here's what he says here. Listen to what he says. He says, it is written, man shall not live by what? But by what? Every word that comes where? Out of his mouth. So watch this. Listen closely, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what I'm getting ready to tell you. Please don't take it as a shock. God is always talking. He never shuts up. Now, if you're not hearing him, that's a different problem. Right? Because when he's not speaking to you audibly through that still small voice, he's talking to you through this Bible. So he never, ever, ever stops talking. Do you know why he never stops talking? Because you need direction. I know, Lord knows I do. I need direction. How do I know I need direction? No, oh, just take a look at the chaos and all kind of stuff in my life that I've done without his direction. Look at all the things I've messed up. Where I've done things without his authority, where I've done things without his approval, or where I've done things without his wisdom. God's wisdom is unmatched. Who? He asked Job, Job, where were you when I formed the world? Where were you at? Did I, I didn't ask for your advice. You have nothing to tell me. Amen. Listen, teachers and students must work together for knowledge and for wisdom and for information to flow. You follow me? Listen closely to this. The teacher, watch, 
the teacher is so good. God is so good in his teaching that when he is teaching, he intellectually takes us to another level because of how smart he is and what he pours into us just through his teaching. He changes the environment to where we are just through teaching us. Think about this. Some of the stuff that you know now that God has shared with you hasn't made you better. Yes or no? Some of the stuff that you know now that God has that God has showed you and taught you has advanced you in your career. Yes or no? Some of the stuff that God has taught you has it made you stronger. Yes or no? Has it made you smarter? Yes or no? Has it given you more faith? Yes or no? Has it moved you beyond situations and circumstances? Yes or no? Has it caused you to walk in victory? Come on, somebody. Has it caused you to walk in victory? Yes or no? Has it brought healing to your life? Yes or no? Has it brought joy to your life? Yes or no? Has it brought peace to your life? Yes or no? Has it brought prosperity? Yes or no? He's so angry. Choco just angry. Turn to Psalms 32 and 8. What'd I say? Matthew 4 and 4? Read it for me. We did that one. We did that one. Okay, go to Psalms 32 and 8. Psalms 32 and 8. You ready? We got to get a new podium. This one's going to hold the Bible up no more. But anyway, listen. Matthew 32 and 8. Who's got the, the microphone? Whoever's got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Psalms. Psalms 32 and 8. Okay. Go. I'm here. Okay. Take your time. You. Oh, wait, let's take it 1 and 8. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Matt, Psalms 32 and 8. Yep. I got it. I'm going. <laughs> okay. I will instruct you. In Stop. Your... What did he say? I will instruct Stop. you. Stop. Say it again. I will instruct. One more time. I will instruct. I, I need you to stand up and say it real loud. <clears throat> say it. I will instruct. Stop. Listen closely. Do y'all know what that is? Listen closely. That's a promise. That's a promise. God is saying, I will instruct you. So in other words, he's making you, he's making you a promise. Watch this. That whenever you come up to something or in your life, he says, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to share with you. And the reason why I'm going to do that is, watch this, because he wants his promises to be fulfilled in your life. And the way that he fulfills those promises in your life is by you listening to his instruction and doing what he's saying. So he makes you a promise that I'm going to talk to you. He makes you another promise to where he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He makes you another promise that says that the, 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 the trials and tribulations, he said, I'll always be with you. He makes you another promise that you're going to be the head and not the tail. He makes you another promise. You're going to be blessed going in and blessed going out. He makes you another promise that your enemies will not overcome you. He makes you another promise that he will heal you. He makes you another promise to deliver you he makes you he makes you these promises why because he can keep them come on let's 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 go now here's another benefit here's the other benefit for cooperating with God the other benefit for cooperating with God is faith so we see the first benefit for cooperating with God is patience we see the second benefit cooperate with God is increased learning. How many of y'all really want to learn some more? I know I do, right? How many of us are just tired of making bad decisions, right? And here's the thing. Watch this. A lot of the decisions we make, J.D. and I had a great conversation the other day. We were talking about something. It was a marvelous, marvelous. And listen, and so one of the things is a lot of times we're making these bad decisions is because we lack in wisdom. We're just not using good wisdom in the situation. You follow me? 
I, I, I share with you this really, really quick, and I'll let you go. My, my daughter, uh, 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 this was one Christmas when, my, when early, in our, early in our ministry, my wife and I, we just really gotten saved and were kind of really, you know, on fire for God, and we was, it was kind of like around Christmas time, and uh, finances just wasn't looking good, and, you know, we were, you know, hey, we were giving in the church and tithing and everything. And, you know, we just, we just kind of held true to that. You know what I mean? We, not, you know, we just didn't want to back down. So I was sitting at the table and I was praying. And, um, and the Lord, made, and the Lord brought, a scripture to my, brought that scripture to my, to my mind about he said to be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication. Thank you. Make your request, Mary, on to God. The peace of God was surpass all you understand. will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. This was Christmas time. Let me tell you something. Listen, when your kids want toys... Don't be messing around playing games on Christmas with their stuff, all right? Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You better figure out the best way to get them toys in that house on Saturday, or you'd like the, you'd like the Santa Claus that's going to get killed on, Sun, you know, on Christmas morning. You know what I mean? Or you just better not be there or do something. You know what I mean? Don't come downstairs talking about some, uh, I, you know, or whatever the case may be. You'd rather rob a bank, do something, get them toys up in there, something. Y'all, y'all rob a bank, ask God for forgiveness. No, I'm just joking. Don't do that. Don't do that. Listen closely. I was joking. I was joking. Let's clear that up. That's why we got insurance to hit to protect the stuff that I say sometimes. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen closely to what I'm getting ready to say, though. Listen, my wife and I, we prayed that scripture, man. We put that thing to the test. And, man, we waited and we waited. And we got, and I, I called when we got in that danger close zone. I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, I'm like. Like, do we, I'm like, Teresa, what do we do? You know, we looking at each other. She's sweating on her brow. I'm sweating. We waiting for God to answer. We like, God, Christmas is coming, God. God, do I need to remind you that Christmas is coming? Or, and we got to get these kids some stuff. And so, and so just as we were sitting there, all of a sudden the Lord says to us, the Lord says, go now. I'm like, go now. Go where? We ain't got no money. What's the matter with you? He like, go now. So we get up and we go shopping. Boom. We had so much stuff in that house that Christmas that we, I'm exaggerating, we had to open the door and have stuff outside. You know what I mean? And it was just so much stuff. Oh, and get this. Watch this. It was way less than what we had planned on spending just because we waited for God. And God said, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to, God said, I'm going to show you, watch this. God said, I'm going to show you supernaturally what I can do for your finances if you submit it to me. And when we did that, God opened up a window of heaven. He poured that thing out. Matter of fact, let me tell y'all something. I'm still wet from that day. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. And watch this. That principle from that day has stuck with us now in the name of Jesus. And now we're trying to find somebody to bless. The principle works if you work it. If you trust him, you'll work, it'll work. And from that day, it's just been promotion after promotion. It's been door opening after door opening. It's been increase after increase. God is just doing amazing things. And reason why is because it was a sacrificial leap of faith for us at that time to where, watch this, we did not no longer look at the situation, but when he said move, we moved and walked right into that season. And a lot of you, listen closely, a lot of you, God has already told you to move, but you're still standing there. The season is waiting for you. All you got to do is move out and watch the windows of heaven open. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go down that trail. Listen closely. Uh, faith, somebody get Romans 10, 17. Who's getting the, get the mic to anybody? I don't care. Get Romans 10, 17. I got a few minutes. I'm going to try to bring this in. Listen closely. By doing what the scriptures tell me, right, faith, faith. By doing what the scriptures tell me, all right? Faith, right? Faith, 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 faith. Romans 10, 17, who's getting it? Give it to anybody. Hit somebody in the head with the mic if they don't want to grab it. The flesh has, listen closely while we're finding Romans 10, 17. Who's got it, Romans 10, 17? I do. Go ahead. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Here we go. So faith comes by hearing, and the hearing by what? The word of God. Now, listen closely. Let me share something with you. I want you to grab this. For God to increase my faith. Listen closely. For God to increase my faith. Watch this. Listen what I'm getting ready to share with you. He must. 
He must be faithful to his word. Do you get that? In order for God to increase my faith, he has to be faithful to his word. So in other words, if he tells me to give and it shall come back to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, once I give, he has to in turn go, here is your good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. If he doesn't do it, he's a liar. But the Bible says faithful is he who has called and faithful is he who will do it. So what he does is, watch this, it's so unique, man. It's crazy good because what God does is he sends his word into my life to challenge me. But the same challenge is not designed to kill me, but it's designed to bring me into my harvest and a place of destiny and purpose. Gosh, it's amazing. Touch somebody and say, I'm going to start doing what he told me to do. Oh, and guess what? Think about this. Let me let you in on a little secret. Now, do me a favor. Don't tell anybody else. This is just for this crowd today. Listen. Here's the thing that you got to get into your mind. Listen closely. You got to get it out of your mind because a lot of us have this in our mind. Here's what we have in our mind. This is close to what I'm going to share with you. What we have in our mind is this, that if I, watch this, and I know I'm right, and a lot of y'all ain't going to admit to it. I'm, I'm, don't, don't have me speak prophetically and read your email and start, and start prophetalying in here. I'll start prophetalying. Listen closely. Watch this. Listen. Listen closely. A lot of us have this mindset, and it's easy for us to get rid of. A lot of us have this mindset that if I do this, watch this, right, that the onus or the result is on me. We have that mindset. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do it because I don't want to look bad. Am I, hello, am I right? Am I right about it? Because I don't want to look bad. But watch this. God will never make you ashamed because whatever God tells you to do, he takes ownership for because what he wants you to do is step out on faith and do it so that all your friends, your family, your relatives and your neighbors can see the supernatural power and hand of God operating on your life. Don't you know people are talking about you because what God has done for you? Don't you know people are? God says, when I tell you to do something, it's because I'm getting ready to reveal my power. And I'm getting ready to show you who I am and what I can do. That's what he wants to do. Don't try to take it. Don't try to take responsibility for it. God says, I have responsibility for it. I'm going to do it. If you follow the instructions of your teacher, watch this, it'll expand your intellect. My, my last point is this. Give me three minutes. I can, I can do this one real quick. My last point is this. The first thing we saw, not necessarily in order, is patience. As a, as, a, as, a, as, as a benefit of, of cooperating with God. The second thing we saw was increased learning. I'm going to learn more when I cooperate with God. You follow me? Here's the reason why. Because as much as I like Janice, as much as I think Janice is a good person, watch this, and I'm not saying this to be negative, as much as, as, much as I think all of y'all are good people, watch this, watch this, your intellect is limited. Am I right, J.D.? Your intellect is limited. Your capacity, it, it, it's, it's limited. But God's intellect is what? It's unlimited. Even your resources are limited. But God's resources are what? Unlimited. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? And so he has unlimited resources. He has unlimited intellect. That's why the Bible says that he's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. The Bible doesn't say you are omniscient, omniscient, and omnipresent. 
It says that God is omniscient, omniscient, and omnipresent. So therefore, it's un, it, it's his intellect and all that stuff is, 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 is unchallenged. It's, it's, un, it's unlimited. So therefore, it would behoove me to listen to him. Now, it, it doesn't, now, I'm not discounting the fact that there is wisdom in the multitude of counsel. I'm not discounting that fact. There is wisdom in the multitude of counsel. But even after I figure out from the multitude of counsel, I still have to listen to what God is going to say. Because watch this. Listen closely. Sometimes the people that's in your council got a different motive than what you got. Everybody at the table ain't for you sometimes. (laughs) Listen, strength. So the last one is we talked about patience, talked about increased learning. We talked about faith. So here's the last one. The last one is strength. Oh, my gosh. When I cooperate with God. When I cooperate with God, I get strength. Watch this. I can remember growing up and having, having three brothers, you know, and, and, and most of y'all have, have family members. And, and we, we use coal this morning for illustration because this is a bad illustration, so I'm going to use coal. I'm going to use myself. And so, you know, his family, you know, one person fight, they all going to jump on you. Probably. Right. Amen. They probably just jumped on somebody last week. I don't know. I'm just saying. But anyway, listen. But listen, you, you follow what I'm saying? So if I was losing a fight and I was fighting somebody and my brother was there, I knew without a shadow of a doubt my brother was come jumping in. He was coming. And so therefore, if I was losing that battle, When my brother came, we was winning now. The tables have turned. I am no longer on the bottom. We going to win this thing. And this is the point that I'm trying to share with you. You might feel like the world is against you right now, and you might feel like you can't make it. You might feel like everybody is getting ahead of you. They're taking advantage of you. But God is saying, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to get in the fight. He said, I'm getting ready to get into this fight. And where you once was losing, God said, I'm getting ready to turn the table. And we're getting ready to win this thing. Human strength is limited. As big as JD is, I don't care. With them 18-inch biceps, and I'm rocking 22-inch biceps. His biceps ain't bigger than mine's. I don't care how big he is. The cop that was here yesterday with them 22-inch biceps, mine's still bigger than his. His strength is limited. His strength is limited. But God's strength is unlimited because he has unlimited supernatural resources. And the other piece to this is, turn to Matthew chapter, nine, uh, chapter uh, 19 and verse 26. Who's got the mic? Somebody go to Matthew 19 and 26. When you get there, just throw your hand up when you get ready to read. Matthew 19 and 26. Watch this. And in my deficiencies where I am weak, once I take God's strength, watch this, I now become strong. Remember, what did he say about the Holy Spirit? He said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? The paraclete. What does paraclete mean? He is the helper. He's the helper. And when the helper comes on, where I may have been leaning this way, the helper brings me back upright to make sure now in the area where I was weak, the helper comes in and where I was deficient or where I was malnourished or where I was lacking, the helper comes in and gives me nourishment and strengthens me and brings me to a place of healing and power and joy and peace to where I am now unstoppable. Because watch this, the things that you are facing oftentimes require, listen closely, they oftentimes require supernatural strength and not natural strength. And sometimes you're trying to fight in the natural when God is saying stop fighting in the natural. Put your armor on and let's fight this thing in the spirit realm. Matthew 19 
15, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is possible. But with God, all things are possible. You got that? Jesus himself showed the limits of man. He said, with man, this is impossible. He can't do it. But he said, with me. Say it again. Hey, let me do it like Hulk Hogan used to do it. All. Now listen closely. I'm done, but listen closely. Listen. You got to be a bad dude. I, I know I'm good. My wife will tell you that. I'm, I'm, I'm sharp. That's why she married me. But watch this. I'm not going to lie to you. There are some things that she asked me to do I can't do. I'm honest with that. And I, sometimes I have to call some help to get somebody else to do some stuff. Like we all that grass in the back of the house need to be cut. I'm like, I right, ain't doing that. Call somebody to come out here and get this grass cut. I ain't going to buy no lawnmower. God bless me. Everybody cut this grass. Some of y'all some of y'all say that's lazy. I'll allow y'all to repent now. <laughs> repent. It'll be okay. But listen to the point that I'm trying to make, though. You have to be a bad dude when you can make this statement all. You have to, you, listen, you have to be on your A game whenever you can say all. You have to, watch this, you have to know your limitations and your capabilities whenever you can make the statement, all. You, I mean, you have to have accomplished, oh, come on somebody, you have to have accomplished some things whenever you can make the statement, all. You have to have a serious track record when you can make the statement, all. You have to have healed some people. You have to have delivered some people. You have to have saved some people. You have to have parted some waters. You have to have hung the sun, the moon, and the stars. You have to have walked on water. You have to have done some serious stuff when you can make the statement, oh, and what God is saying is this. With man, he's limited, but God is saying, I can do all things. Whatever you can think of, Whatever situation you find yourself in, no matter whether it's day, whether it's night, whether it's Sunday, whether it's Monday, whether you're on a plane, whether you're in a boat, whether you're on Greyhound, whether you're on a train, it doesn't matter. He said, I can do all things. What does that mean? Watch this. You know what that means? That means that we're in my mind as a man, I look at things sometimes and say that's minimal. I don't want to deal with that. But God looks at the minimal and says, no, 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 no. I can even handle that. There is no limit to what he can do. There is no limit to his strength. There is no limit to his possibilities. There is no limit to his anointing. There's no limit to his grace. There's no limit to his love. There's no limit to his availability. There's no limit to his presence. There's no limit to his word. There's no limit to his vision. There's no limit to his purpose. There's no limit to his plan. There's no limit to his forgiveness. There's no limit to his grace. There's no limit to his love. There's no limit to his ability. There is no limit to him. And since there is no limit, I can make the statement that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So now his all turns into my all. Only because he has stepped on the scene. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? And these are the benefits of cooperating with God. I begin to go from powerless to having power because I'm bringing God on the scene. I go from being broke to having prosperity because I'm bringing all his heavenly resources on the scene. I go from being sick and infirm to being healed in the name of Jesus because I'm cooperating with his word. I go from driving a beater, is what they call it, 
to Malibu, Cadillac, Camaro, you name it, new 2021. Because he is on the scene. And I want us to change our perception today. Change your thought process today. Stop thinking that you're the pauper. Stop thinking you don't have power when he's already told you that I've given you power. Stop thinking that he's not with you when he's already told you I'll be with you always, even until the end. Think, stop thinking that you don't have vision and purpose when he's told you to write the vision and make it plain. And though it tarry, he said to wait on it. He said, it shall speak and it shall not lie. Stop thinking that your enemies are going to triumph over you when he already has told you that he will make your enemies your footstool. And stop trusting a man. When he said, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. But I will remember the name of the Lord thy God, for the name of the Lord thy God is a strong tower. And the righteous run in and are saved. What did you mean, remember his name? When I remember his name, I remember all that he has done. And if he did it for you, and God is no respecter person, Oh, you should lose your mind right here. If he did it for you, and God is no respecter of person, he might not do it for me tonight. He might not do it tomorrow. But as long as my name is Terrence, and he did it for Keisha, and he did it for Teresa, he did it for Jimmy, all I got to do is sit here and wait and watch this. And I'm not going to be jealous that he did it for you. I'm going to shout for you. I'm going to clap for you. I'm going to applaud you. I'm going to pat you on your back. I'm going to bless you. I'm not going to talk bad about you. I'm going to cheer you on. Glory to God. Because when my season comes and God blesses me, I'm looking for you to pat me on my back. I'm looking for you to encourage me and strengthen me and congratulate me because I'm going to hold on to the promises of God. I'm not going to let go because I know in due season I'm going to reap a harvest if I faint not. Come on and stand to your feet. God is amazing. I love him so much. He's simply marvelous at what he has done for us. We're here today because he deemed it to be so. We want to welcome all of our visitors this morning. If you're fellowshipping with us for the first time, just throw your hand up. We want to at least say hi to you. God bless you, my brother, for coming. We love you. We appreciate you. Come on, come on. Let's give him a hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We pray that there was a word said here or spoken today. We thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing in your worship. Thank you so much for rolling out of your bed, coming out, and spending the time to hear what the word of God say. I pray that the Lord will bless you some 10, 20, 30 fold. I pray that your next season will be the season that you did not expect, but it's the season for this time in your life in the name of Jesus. My brother, I thank you so much for coming back from out west, coming to see us. Thank you. You, you. you were committed to your word when you said, Pastor, I'm going out west, but I'm coming back to see you. We love you so much. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Listen, come on, everybody stretch their hands. Teresa, can you come, please? I don't want to catch, I, I, I hate to catch my wife off guard. I'm learning now to not do it. I haven't gotten two lumps in a while. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. My wife and I want to tell you all, thank you so much. We pray that the Lord continue to bless you. You have our phone number. You can call us at any time. Here's where we're moving to now as a church. We're moving to now from no longer suffering lack and poverty and listen closely and being stupid to what the word of God is saying. It's not happening for us. We are moving into what I call an active participation with God and his word to bring to full fruition every purpose and plan that God has for our lives. We're on the move. Touch the person next to you say, we're moving. We're, moving. we're on the move.
Tell them. Tell them again. Say, we're on the move. Tell them. Watch this. Tell them. Say, listen. So say, if you come here next week and you try to sit next to me and I'm not here, it's because I moved. We on national TV making a fool of ourselves. <laughs> My wife said, that's all you. That's all you. It ain't me. <laughs> Father, I pray this morning, God, that you bless this people. God, they, they, in essence, have given all that they have to give. They've served faithfully. They've served diligently, God. They've stayed up late at night. They've prayed. God, they've done everything that I believe that you've asked them to do. God, we're praying that this is their season. God, let it come suddenly in the name of Jesus. And God, when you do it, don't do it behind a closed door. No, God, bless them out in the marketplace. Bless them in their job. God, bless them so that everybody sees it and let it be a testimony to your grace and your mercy and your hand upon their lives in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray, God, that when you bless them, they do not be ashamed, God, in the name of Jesus. For the blessings of God upon their lives. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling, present you falling before the throne. To the only wise God, be power, majesty, and dominion, henceforth from now forevermore. All of God's people said amen. 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 Listen, God bless you. Go in peace. Please go serve the Lord. Thank you so much. My wife and I, we love you. We love you. We love you. We can't do this without you. And we thank you so much for what you do. In Jesus' name.